Now that we've seen how to allocate memory and work with memory in C++, let's take a look at a technique we can use to actually examine memory byte by byte. So suppose we have a structure. This could actually be any data type. It doesn't really matter. But for this example, we're going to use this struct that has an int, four chars, and another int. And we can initialize this structure with a hexadecimal integer literal, four characters, and then another hexadecimal integer literal. And the reason I chose these particular numbers is 61 is the hexadecimal value of the ASCII code for lowercase a, this is lowercase b, lowercase c, and so forth. And these two digits take one byte to store. So each hexadecimal digit is four bits. So two would be eight bits, which would be a byte. Characters are stored in one byte. So in these three locations, we would actually be storing the ASCII values, which would be hexadecimal 65, 66, 67, and so on. And I can reference those using the dot notation if I have this variable. Now in memory, when this initialization happens, the bit structure looks like this. Again, this is what the actual bits look like, but I'm consolidating every four bits into a single hexadecimal digit. So just to help you understand what's going on at a slightly lower level, let's see what that first value, 61, looks like as binary. So 6 is 1011 in binary, and 1 is 0001 in binary. So notice this is a full byte. We can represent it with two hexadecimal characters, and the first four bits of the byte are the first hexadecimal digit, which in this case is 6. The next four digits are digit, which in this case is 1. So this first number, field A, would be these four bytes. The character A is the ASCII value 41 hex, B is 42, C is 43, D is 44. Again, those are the hexadecimal ASCII values. And then finally, we have another int, which let's say it's four bytes here. And notice this is a repeating pattern of 23s. So each byte has hex value 23 in it. So this is what the memory looks like. Now, let's assume we have a pointer. If we have a pointer to this structure, we can access the fields. So pointer A would be this first integer field. I could access the character fields, and then I could also access field B. And I also want to stop for a moment and be clear. This is not necessarily the way the bytes are arranged in memory. That's implementation dependent. I'm assuming that the bytes here are getting laid out exactly the way they appear in the initialization, but the order of some of these could be changed up, and we'll actually be able to see that once we get into the code. So now, instead of a struct example pointer, suppose I have a character pointer. A character pointer points to a character, which is a one-byte integer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a character pointer, and I'm going to set it equal to the address of this structure cast to a character pointer. So now the character pointer is going to point to this address, and I can access the next element by dereferencing C pointer plus one. I can access field C2, which is the sixth byte in the structure, by dereferencing C pointer plus five. I can access this byte, that's eight bytes away from the beginning, so C pointer plus eight. The last byte of this structure would be C pointer plus 11. Now again, we're assuming we have four byte integers. We're assuming the way those things are arranged in memory, those aren't guaranteed. But again, this is helpful. The, the purpose of this is to give you an idea of what's actually going on behind the scenes once we start looking at the code. So we're going to call our program bimdump.c, and we have this example structure. And then our main program, we're going to initialize it. We have a pointer to that, and then we can look at the contents of the structure. Actually, let's rename this s pointer. And instead of some of these, we'll use the struct pointer to access those fields just to show that whether we access it through the variable or the pointer, we're getting the same values. So once I do this, I'll need to do a little bit of work to line everything up again. And that seems to have done it. So let's compile this and see if we can get it to run. So I'm going to reduce the size of this window. And when I run this code, you can see I get the contents of the structure. And those are what I would expect as far as the values. Now notice 
I could, if I wanted, do something like this, where I print the integer value as well of each of these. So now I'm printing the integer value of each field plus the character value. And so you can see that this is the decimal ASCII value. And if I wanted to print these in hex, I'll do the characters in hex. That way everything gets printed in hex. And so now you can see those are the values that we were expecting to see for the character fields. But the one thing to keep in mind is when you have a number, if you print it as a hexadecimal, then that'll show you what the bits look like. Again, keeping in mind that each digit represents four bits. Okay, there's lots of different ways we can look at this memory, but I think the most general way would be to write a function. So I'm gonna write a function that's going to dump some number of bytes starting at some starting point. So I'm going to call it memdump. And it's going to take a character pointer to some starting location. And it's going to take a length. And I'm going to set up a loop variable. And that's going to be equal to zero at first. And then while ii is less than the length, I'm going to print f the address I'm looking at, the decimal value in 10 characters, the hex value in 10 characters, and the character value. And we'll do that in a five character column. So for each of these fields, well, for the first field, I'm going to say start plus ii. And then for the rest of them, I'm going to dereference start plus ii. And it looks like I have an extra start, so, or extra plus in my start. And I think that looks good. And then I'll increment ii. So what this function is going to do when I call it, and I'll pass it the address of ex1, but I need to cast that to a character pointer. So ex1, and I'll pass the number of bytes in ex1 so that I'm sure to print each byte. Now, there's no reason this needs to be the limit. I could do four bytes, I could do whatever, but for now, this will suit our purposes. So I compile, and I have a bug. I'm missing a semicolon there. So now you can see in addition to my original output, first off, I need to put a new line here. And I could probably, uh, these are all bytes. So I actually have these fields way too big. So let me put the new line in there and then I'll make these fields four, four, and four. Actually three for that one because it'll never be any bigger than that. So now that's a lot better looking. And so here you can see at this address, I have a 99 stored, which is 63. And a couple of things that I want to point out, this, if we go back and look at our initialization, 64, 63, 62, 61, Notice the addresses are increasing, but this these values are decreasing. And that's because in the first byte, we're actually putting this 64. And that has to do with the Indianness of, of the system. And that's something that we'll talk about later. But just for now, no, you don't want to rely on the way things are arranged in memory being the same on every system. The nice thing about this particular function we wrote is now we can actually see what the memory looks like. And you'll notice the characters are in the correct order. And then here we have 2323. Well, 23 hex is the ASCII value of the hash symbol. And so you can see that there. So we have ABCD, ABCD, and our hashes. That's what we are expecting. And we could do this more or less. There's no reason we couldn't say 
times two here. And if we do that and compile and run, then notice we get a whole bunch of junk. But again, that's what we'd expect. We, ne we didn't initialize any of this. And so it just is going to be whatever's out there sitting in memory. If there was additional variables and so forth, we probably could go through and, and find those individual variables. Another thing is, is suppose you don't like how this works. Uh, one thing that you might find interesting to do is to try to get some logic to align this on a word boundary so that you're showing four bytes per row and that'll reduce the size of your output. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can use a character pointer to examine individual pieces of memory.